if you have liquid nitrogen and you can freeze them immediately. It's a very, very quick freeze. And the idea of that is to help stop crystal formation in the cells. So it actually stops the water crystals from forming. So when cells die, they automatically start to break down. There's enzymes that start to shear the DNA, break down the tissue walls, and just destroy the entire cell. Um, the idea of deep freezing is that we can actually stop the enzymes from breaking down the cell. If you put it in the minus 80, you slow that process down, but the enzymes are still breaking down the DNA, but at a slower pace. By putting it in the liquid nitrogen tanks, it stops it pretty much completely. So the frozen tissue collection is actually built by the researchers in the museum, primarily. Um, when they get a grant to go study specimens, they deposit their tissues in the collection. They use part of the tissue for their own research, and it is kept for others in the future to use them for additional research. hundred years ago, people did not know what DNA was, and so they weren't collecting tissues. However, within the last 20 to 30 years, people have realized how important these tissues are and begun collecting them in the field, including taking liquid nitrogen tanks in the field with them or ethanol to preserve tissues and deposit them in museums. Loan request for tissues is probably one of the most used collections in the museum. I start with a tube about the size of a peanut, and then from that you extract about um, a piece of tissue the half of the size of a flax seed, and you put that, and that's probably enough for about two extractions, DNA extractions. Being born and raised in Alaska, I should be used to the cold by now and working in a freezer room. Um, I prefer still a lot warmer temperatures. So yeah, I mean, with negative 30, anybody needs gloves, even with a minus 80. It's like on the playground, you're not going to go and grab a cold piece of metal or a cold things without gloves on. No. We have over 175,000 samples from fish, mammals, uh, birds, invertebrates, you name it. And that we take several different types of tissues. So we have muscle, heart, kidney, the typical tissues, but then we also have uh, fecal material, stomach contents, parasites. They're labeled, so they'll tell you the number with the barcode, what type of tissue it is, and then all the different colors on the caps are, indicate different tissues. So, for instance, purple is brain, um, red is traditionally heart or tissue, blue is muscle. We're in the forever business. We're keeping things for people to look at in a hundred years. We need these tissues to last so people can ask questions. I mean, we don't know what technology is going to come up with.